Hello, it's Scott Manley here, back in San Francisco, and once again demonstrating dubious work-life balance as I try to bring you stories about space and rockets. So today, if all things go to well, Parker Solar Probe should lift off from Florida. It should burn through its first stages, it should drop its uh, extra core boosters, switch on the second stage and add a third stage of a Delta IV rocket. The Parker Solar Probe is going where no probe has gone before, deep into the corona of the sun. Now the Parker Solar Probe is named for Eugene Parker, who has uh, made many great breakthroughs understanding the transition of the surface of the sun into the corona. One of the fascinating problems still in astronomy is why the corona of the sun, why the upper atmosphere outside the photosphere is so hot. It's like millions of degrees Kelvin hot. And the surface of the sun is only thousands of degrees Kelvin. So how do you heat this upper atmosphere in this way? Why is that happening? This space probe is going to go down there and it's going to find out. It's going to collect data. Maybe we'll get some clues. Now, look, it's not going to be taking pictures. At least it's not going to be taking pictures of the sun. It's actually going to be imaging sideways. If you want to get a picture of the sun, you know, you use something like Soho or whatever that goes out and takes pictures uh, using a telescope. No, it's got to go and be there because it has to look at the particles and the energy spectra and the magnetic fields. And the only way to do that properly is to get down there. There's been talk of missions for a long time to get this close to the sun. And as I said, Solar Probe Plus was an evolution of Solar Probe. The original Solar Probe concept was going to go to the sun via Jupiter. It would, take, it would go outwards, get a gravity assist off of Jupiter, and then that would swing it down. And that would mean it would take about four years between every pass. This one is being much more energetic. It's actually slowing down, and it's leaving the Earth as one of the fastest spacecraft ever. It's not quite as fast as New Horizon. But from there, it will get a gravity assist off of Venus. In fact, it will get seven gravity assists off of Venus. You, if you've been you know, looking at the sun after sunset, you've seen Venus there sitting slightly ahead of us in the orbit. Or sorry, slightly behind us in the orbit. Uh, we, yeah, so we're, we're basically going to encounter that in a couple of months, and it's going to you know, zip down and get lower and lower. And when it gets close enough, it'll be something like 0.4 AU, 6 million kilometers or thereabouts. And it's going to be hot down there. It's going to be damn hot. It's also going to be moving fast. It's going to be moving about 200 kilometers per second, making it the fastest man-made object or human-made object ever. And that's just because although it was originally slowed down, it falls deep into the sun's gravity well. And the gravity of the sun just kicks it up and makes it the fastest thing ever. So this is, you know, breaking all sorts of records with this. And to do that, it has to use the largest rocket that the US currently has. Well, OK, so Falcon Heavy technically can loft a little more than the Delta IV, but you know, Falcon Heavy isn't doing non-reusable launches yet, so we, we can kind of forget about that for now. Interestingly, it was origi it's first of all, it's the only spacecraft, I think, the only payload that has ever used the Delta IV Heavy, where they essentially strap three Delta IVs together with an extra third upper stage in the form of a Star 48 uh, BV booster. So this is a solid rocket booster. The 48 references the 48 inch wide propellant casing. It's about two tons and it will add about 3.3 kilometers per second to the spacecraft. Yeah, no other payload has needed this. But originally, they thought that they would be able to launch this from an Atlas V with all five strap-ons, but they would instead have a special Star 48 GXV, and G would mean graphite casing, X meant it was extra big, and V actually references a thrust vectoring nozzle because there are other versions of the Star Booster which spin up, uh, they're spin stabilized, and then they have a yo-yo destabilization. So anyway, yeah, they, they decided that, that developing a new booster was a little risky, so let's just use you know, this awesome Delta IV, which of course, it's always worth watching Delta IV's launch because this thing sets itself on fire epic style and you are going to see a massive fireball since it is launching about 3 a.m. local time. It's going to leave Earth's sphere of influence going very, very fast, head down, encounter Venus in a couple of months and uh, encounter Venus seven more times. The spacecraft itself has a hydrazine propulsion system, but there are no maneuvers that are required 
uh, other than course correction maneuvers. So it already has the delta V once uh, that final stage lights. I mean, odds are it might actually have to slow down. Like that's what uh, that's what New Horizons had to do. I had to actually slow down because that upper stage gave it more thrust, more delta V than was required. So yeah, from there it, it is. It's going to get very close to the surface. It's going to start collecting all sorts of fascinating scientific data. It's going to be imaging sideways. It's going to be doing all that. But of course, that close in, it's going to get very, very hot. So it's roughly going to be... So 0.4 AU means that the sun is going to be 25 times the apparent size. So to put things in perspective, if you've seen a seven inch single, an old style with a little hole in the middle, that hole is about seven millimeters across. The disc is seven inches across. So if you hold that seven inch single record out at arm's length, then the hole in the middle is roughly the size of the sun as we see it. Whereas the disc is the size of the sun as Parker Solar Probe will see it during one of its perihelia passes. The perihelion passes are gonna last just over a day has two different solar system, solar panel systems. When it's far from the sun, it uses the primary uh, solar system. And when it gets in close, it tucks that away behind the heat shield and brings out a secondary, smaller solar power system, which is liquid cooled to make sure that it does not uh, get damaged by the intense solar radiation at that distance. Because, of, because it's gonna be very hot, they have to have a sun shield. The sun shield is about, uh, 20% of the mass of the spacecraft and also the sun shield has to remain pointing very accurately continuously. If uh, they lose control for more than you know a few seconds it could actually result in the spacecraft turning and then you have that like that scene in sunshine where bits of the spacecraft start melting and catching fire. So this is one of the most heavily uh, automated and backed up spacecraft. It has multiple fail-safe systems to make sure that there is a, mo a gap of no of less than five seconds between something failing and something taking control again. Attitude control is going to be by reaction wheels, but of course to desaturate those, they're going to need to have a hydrazine propulsion system, which will, you know, of course, help with attitude control. Uh, of course, the hydrazine propulsion system will eventually run out of fuel, and at that point, well, things are not looking good. The spacecraft will no longer be able to maintain pointing and will eventually melt, disintegrate, burn up, and all that will be left decades from now orbiting the sun will be uh, the heat shield. It will continue in the orbit for decades to come, a monument to an ambitious mission which went where no other mission has gone before. It'll be super exciting and I, I can't wait to see the data. I mean, these missions are all about the data. Sure, it's a spectacular launch. It's amazing to set all these records, but what we're really interested in is what this is gonna see when it is deep down in the million degree corona just above the surface of our sun. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe. Mm -hmm.